Welcome to WP Coffee Talk. Thank you to all of our sponsors, and especially to our Espresso Level sponsors, Helix Managed WordPress Hosting, for both their sponsorship and for hosting our site, and to Expander Digital for both their sponsorship and providing SEO services to us. Now enjoy the episode. Welcome to WP Coffee Talk, where I get to talk to people all over this amazing WordPress community and all over the world. Uh, this morning, I'm actually recording in the morning, usually in the evening, but this morning, I'm not afraid to drink coffee because it's not even <laughs> noon yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm happy to introduce to you today somebody that many of you will already um, have seen online, and this is Joe Casabona. How are you doing today, Joe? I'm doing great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being here. It's a, it's a pleasure to uh, be able to talk to you today. Now, you asked me where I am before we got online. I can't remember where you are, so tell me where you're located. I, uh, it's, this one is easy to forget because I've moved like four or five times in the last six years. Uh, so I'm currently uh, near Westchester, Pennsylvania, a suburb outside okay. of Philadelphia. Um, but okay. before, I've kind of worked my way downstate. I am originally from uh, New York. Uh, and since you are from Rochester, you will know that when I say I'm from Orange County, New York, you know that that is not upstate New York. It is not. It is downstate. <laughs> and, but, but people on Manhattan would say, oh, so you're from upstate, huh? Yeah. And I'd be like, no, <laughs> upstate, if you've ever been to upstate, it's very different from Orange County. Like, it's still noisy. Like, upstate's very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually drive for hours and hours in upstate and not see a building. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's very idyllic up there. Yeah, maybe some sugar huts for, uh, yeah. <laughs> for, for doing maple syrup, and that's about it. But. <laughs> Yeah, but thanks again for being here with me today. Uh, I appreciate that. My pleasure. Yeah, yeah it's, it's always exciting. And I do love sometimes when I get out of my normal rut, which is always five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, these late night um, interviews. So it's great to have, have be a little bright eyed and bushy tailed to be able to talk to you today. So Awesome. Yeah. Are you are you a morning person or, or more of an evening person? I pretend to be a morning person. Ah, uh, gotcha. So I very I'm much at, am a morning person. <laughs> see, I, I could stay up till four in the morning working. Wow. And then sleep until noon or usually 10. But anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> but like this, well, this weekend I was at a word camp. Right. So you cannot sleep in the day of a word camp, especially if you're the keynote and you're the first one going. <laughs> <laughs> So I got myself up real early on Saturday so that I would at least feel like I was a little bit later in the day. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to like hijack your, I know we have no, questions, go for but it. Uh, we do, yeah. um, I always make, uh, so I'm a morning person. I wake up at like 5.30 or 6 every morning. Oh my God. And, you, uh, you actually see that thing called a sunrise. Yeah. It's, it. it's beautiful. <laughs> it's very nice. Um, and it's not just since I became a parent either. Um, I, I, when I taught at the University of Scranton, I always made it a point to grab the Monday 8 a.m. slot because I wanted college freshmen to, uh, I wanted to be their first impression of college. So <laughs> they're like- you, were, you wanted yeah. to torture them. <laughs> exactly. They're barely alive. And I'm like, morning, everybody. And they're oh, like, oh. Uh, kill me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they're in their pajamas and you're like, I've been up for hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I joke about um, not knowing what a sunrise looks like. Of course, I've seen a sunrise, but I belong to a photography group online. And I actually nice. asked, I asked somebody one day, like when I was early on in my photography career, I said, uh, and it's, I posted in the group, I'm like, is there a way to tell by looking at the photo if it's a sunrise? Or, or actually, I said, is there a way to tell if it's a sunrise or a sunset photo? And really, there isn't. Because okay, you don't know right. which direction you're, but one person yeah. responded, it depends on whether you're holding coffee or wine. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. So there you go. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do with WordPress. All right. I am a uh, developer, course creator, and podcaster in that order chronologically. So uh, I've been making um, websites since high school, early 2000s. I've been using WordPress since 2004. Um, and uh, after I got my master's degree at the University of Scranton in 2009, I started teaching and I realized I loved that. So I decided to kind of combine those things and teach WordPress development to people. Fast forward a couple of years later, uh, that's my main business. I create online courses for how to build sites, uh, mostly with WordPress. Um, and then I have a podcast called How I Built It, where I interview people on how they've built their businesses. Again, a lot of people in the WordPress space because that's my, my network. So uh, that's, I do um, mostly educational things these days, but educational stuff and, and development. 
That's fantastic. I love teaching too. I was in higher education for over 20 years nice. before I sw- switched careers into WordPress. So wow, very nice. Yeah, it's a lot of fun stuff. So I usually tell people how I know you and sometimes it's just through Twitter or things like that. I have to apologize to you because I actually Twitter shamed you last year. Oh, did you? Camp- <laughs> <laughs> we were at WordCamp US mm-hmm. and I introduced myself to you. I was at the give table and I introduced oh, myself yes. to and I said, and I said, I've been following you on Twitter for a long time and you've never followed me back. And that was really rude. And I apologize. <laughs> no, that's but- no problem. I clearly, I like, I clearly was not hurt by it. Uh, I hope we follow each other now. I have like, I've been, I've been using lists a lot lately. Yeah. So yeah. Um, even if it doesn't say follow, like I'm still catching your tweets. So <laughs> no, um, you, you actually pulled out your phone right then and there and did it in front of me. <laughs> so. I've got to say like word, WordCamp US last year, there was like a lot of Twitter shaming between me and other people happening because I was very <laughs> vocal about some things and, and people that I was vocal towards responded and I didn't expect them to respond. So there was a lot of Twitter drama with me last year. <laughs> I, and I, I was just kind of catching you on the island, teasing yeah. you a little bit about it, but I'm glad that we're still friends. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I always say if someone is not willing to bust your chops, um, they probably, like if somebody busts my chops, I know they like me, right? So. Exactly, exactly. And I'm, I'm happy that we, and this is not our first time on camera together on, on the show, because I actually interviewed you recently for WordCamp US as well. So yeah, um, so that, yeah, so not, we're all friends now. That's all. There yeah, is we go way back. Yeah, way back, way back. So <laughs> show us your mug and tell us what's in it. So uh, this is Ooh, Star and, Wars. Yes, Star Wars. This is a droids mug. I bought this at uh, Disney World uh, at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. My brother works there. And he was able to get me into Galaxy's Edge before it officially opened to do a preview. Ooh. So I had to buy something. Uh, and I am, I am drinking um, Theodore's Coffee. I'm in a coffee club with other WordPress people. And uh, I forget, I really forget the name of the coffee, but it's like dark chocolate and like hints of tobacco. I'm a cigar smoker. Uh, so it's that coffee with some French vanilla creamer in it. Now, this is the second time I've heard about this coffee club. I have got to get you. Send me the details later. I want to join. I, I wanna, most definitely I wanna, will. Yeah. I want to send coffee. down right now. <laughs> I want to send coffee. I want to get coffee. And it sounds like a really fun thing to be involved with. Yeah. And Lord knows I'm part of the WordPress community. So yeah. I see there's writing inside your mug too. Is that like droid speak? Uh, yeah. So this is um, the, uh, oh my gosh. You know, I tell people I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And now I'm going to forget that Arabesh. This is Arabesh. This oh, is like okay. the... Um, the non-English language in Star Wars. So there's a whole okay. alphabet and language around it, and that's what this is. Gotcha. There's a, a meme, a coffee meme, that says, um, this is not the latte you're looking for. <laughs> and I had no idea what it meant. My future son-in-law is a huge Star Wars fan, so I texted it to him. I'm like, what is this referring to? I see it everywhere. He's like, oh, it's the quota. These are not the droids you're looking for. I'm like, it makes sense now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Yes. So yeah. I used to think I was just like the biggest Star Wars fan. And then I would go to events where people were wearing like, like costumes, like cosplay costumes that they spent yeah. like thousands of dollars on. And I'm like, I just really like the movies. Like, and it's just <laughs> like in the extended universe, I read the books and stuff, but I'm definitely not the biggest Star Wars fan. <laughs> You're in the, somewhere, somewhere towards the top, but not that high, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm more than most, but like very bottom of the barrel for like the hardcores. Well, I saw the original trilogy in the theater when they came out, and that's kind of where it ends for me. So there you go. Well, they are, they are the best ones. I, I like people like uh, trash the prequels and the new ones that are coming out, but I just like Star Wars stories. So I will, I will happily consume whatever Disney and Lucasfilm decides to put out. I love it. That's awesome. Switching gears back to WordPress. Tell us how you got started with WordPress. I, uh, let's see. I was working in a computer lab in college with my friend, Steve Mikosh, and I said, hey, I think I'm going to build a way for my student, my, my clients to manage their own uh, content. And he said, have you heard of WordPress? And I was like, no. And I was a freshman in college at this point. I had like just started programming, so I had no idea how to actually build a CMS. Uh, so he said, have you heard of this? And I'm like, yeah, no, I haven't. I looked it up. It was great. This was like before WordPress had pages. So my first few client sites were like the blog. And then I had like PHP 
files in WordPress core because it was 2004 and like no, there were no standards. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> or there were no well-known standards at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that was like the first time I really started using WordPress. And then by 2006, 2007, all of my client sites were, were being built on top of WordPress. That's awesome. I love WordPress. It's just, there's so much that you can do with it. And I think that, and it's been wonderful to watch it grow over time, which is really cool too. Yeah. The, I mean, the evolution has been amazing as far as like standards go and features. Like when pages got added in 2006, I was like, yes, <laughs> this is amazing. So, um, yeah. and, and now with, I mean, with everything you can do and it's still a growing industry. And, and that's part of the reason I decided to get into education is because mm -hmm. um, basically back then you would download WordPress and then FTP it, and then you would have to like code. Um, right. But now it's like, what, what page builder do I use? Or like, do I need this? Yeah. How do I do that? So um, it's, it's been really fun seeing it evolve and then helping people get started today. When I, I had a mentor that helped me learn WordPress and um, he told me, there's this thing called one button install, but that's not what I'm going to teach you mm -hmm. and teach you how to download it. I'm going to teach you how to change the files that you need to change it. You change the information in the WP config file that you need to change. I'm going to show you how to find salt keys because I want you to understand how it works. And then, you know, you can always go back to the one button install, but understanding it, like ba the basics of it and like, that kind of thing was really helpful. I thought so as a teacher, I'm like fascinated to hear your answers to half of my questions today. So yeah. the next question I always ask is, um, you know, what is something you think that we as, you know, the internet community should focus more attention on to make better, stronger websites for our users? That's a, that's a really good question. Um, and the, I, I guess the, <laughs> the I think them all up all by myself. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I, I love it because it's not one that often gets asked. And, and when I hear it or I think about it, the default answer I always go to is people say WordPress is easy, but it's only easy for people who use WordPress. Um, and, and now that answer is evolving a little bit, right? Because maybe WordPress is a little easier now, right? You sign up for like SiteGround or, or whoever, um, whatever hosting company you feel is best for this show. Um, and WordPress is there already, right? Like, and, and you just log in, you get an email automatically, and then you start. Or you have hosting companies that have like an onboarding process where you pick your theme and everything gets set up. But now it's like, oh, I heard of this page builder called Beaver Builder. Oh, I heard of this page builder called Elementor. And they do kind of different things. So I'm going to install both and use them both. Um, and so now the... WordPress is easy has evolved to now we need to show people how to uh, do WordPress kind of the right way and not just you know you you only need one hammer for the job right you don't need like 14 different hammers right um, so I think I think the question more is how do I set up WordPress the right way um, mm -hmm. and not just the I found a bunch of tutorials online and I followed them all way and I have all the plugins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've like, I've legit, like I've done audits on websites. So like my, my site's low or is this right? Where I've seen Beaver Builder, Elementor and Divi all installed on one website, um, multiple form builders, um, and then uh, a bunch of different plugins for the LMS uh, plugin that they were using. And it's just because somebody cobbled together this and they wanted to do a thing and they saw a tutorial and they mm -hmm. saw they could easily do the thing they wanted to do with X. And so they installed it. And so um, that's, that's the problem that I've been thinking about a lot lately. Mm -hmm. And then throw in a bunch of media files that have not been downsized for web. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which, I mean, as we record this, right, 5.3 is gearing up to, to help with that, which is really right. cool. I think that's going to be uh, hugely helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I say a lot of times, I, like, I think that um, a future, and this is my suggestion, I haven't put it out there yet to the world, but I think one of the future iterations of uh, WordPress should say, when you upload an image, not let you finish the process until you put the alt tags in. Like how much more yeah. accessible would it be if it just prompted you to do that whenever you added an image? Yeah, you know? absolutely. And because, I mean, it's easy to forget. I know I need to, and I forget sometimes too. Um, yeah. And so people who don't know they need to do that, 
Um, and I'm going to say need to, right? Because like the right. Supreme Court thing with Domino's recently, like mm-hmm. uh, people don't know they need to do that. And, and all right. of a sudden now they could get in trouble for something that they had no idea about. Right. Yeah. And, and what, what do they say? The um, ignorance is not a uh, good defense. So yeah, you, have to right. be, you have to know this stuff. Yeah. What's, something, what's something that you, I mean, you were an early adopter, so this might be an odd question for you, but think about at any point in your WordPress journey, is there something that you learned later on that you thought, gosh, I wish I'd known that sooner because that would have made life a lot easier? Ooh, man. Um... And if the answer is no, that's fine too, but. <laughs> yeah, no, no uh, back up your website. That I yeah. learned the hard way to not do that, right? Because again, I was an early adopter. So yeah. I was using my first host, my first real host that wasn't like GeoCities was a hosting company called JiffyNet. Um, I don't know if they're around anymore, but they were super cheap and I was in college. Um, and they didn't have any automatic anything, right? Because they were super cheap. And then even when I moved to DreamHost, right? This was like, way before managed anything so Mm -hmm. um i remember like losing a website and i think i had like the initial install files from like doing the local development so like Uh i lost a bunch of stuff um and so i learned the hard way always have a backup so i wish i knew i wish i knew better back then um so and now there are like lots of plugins and i think that like hosting companies I don't know if they all do it, but I think they should do that automatically. I, like take a, I agree. Right? Mm-hmm. So. so basically you wish you had a you, a teacher. Yeah, like you, <laughs> yeah. You those yeah. Things. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. Cause that's the other thing, right? When I started, um, I didn't know any of the core contributors. I knew like, well, I, I knew of Alex King. Uh, he was the f- first kind of person I started following and uh, my friend, Steve Mikosh. And even when I started like freelancing full time, that was after I graduated from college in 2007. Like there was not, there was not a lot of resources. Freelance switch from Envato was like a new thing, mm-hmm. but I'm lucky I had a entrepreneur uh, mentor in, in his name is Joe Rizzi. He ran the deli that I worked for because I am a New York Italian and I'm required by law <laughs> to at least hold two stereotypical jobs. Um, <laughs> And so I worked at a deli. I also swept hair at a barber shop. So that's number two. Um, <laughs> but he, he helped me. He showed me the ropes for running a business and pricing and things like that. But um, it was the WordPress landscape as far as freelancing goes was still very new. So yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, when you think back over all of the meetups and word camps and WordPress events that you've attended, and I know there's been quite a few of them, like myself is there a moment or two that for you is like a pivotal moment or you know kind of like the angel saying as I like to say that something like that where you just thought this this was worth being here for and what was it hmm yeah uh well the first word camp I attended was word camp New York City 2008 2008 I think it was 2008 Matt Mullenweg showed up and I just thought wow that's cool like the guy who invented WordPress right um like showed up and talked to this relatively small WordCamp um and some of the people I met there I'm still friends with today and um I think that's I think that is like consistently the takeaway right that's why I spend my own money to go to WordCamps is because my network has been built considerably and I made friends I've made business partners and, and um, my business certainly wouldn't be where it is today. And I wouldn't have been able to go out full time um, a couple of years ago. I don't know if I'll get to this story, but I mean, like my daughter was three months old when I started my own business full time. Wow. Uh, and I wouldn't have been able to do that without the people that I met through Word, Word Camps and WordPress events. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, um, it's an amazing community for sure. I have my job with Give because I was speaking at a WordCamp. Yeah, that's you know, so, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool that way. So um, tell us a little bit about your courses that you offer and how you're doing them. And are they in person, online? How are you putting that all together? They are online courses. And it's I, I, another kind of hard lesson, right, I've learned um, is uh, you don't just build, like it's not, doing stuff online these days isn't really field, field of dreams marketing, right? You can't just build it and they'll come. Right. Um, and, and there are a lot of ways to validate an idea 
And I never really did any of that. I really just started doing it like this year, to be honest, um, or last year maybe. Um, but I started, I tried doing online or in-person courses and I was living in Scranton, Pennsylvania, uh, which is about two hours from both New York City and Philadelphia. Ah, uh, very nice. See that? <laughs> my, my, Rock in the little, office mug. Yeah. <laughs> girl under my friend, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, absolutely. So uh, I tried doing in-person classes and um, I got people who came from like the Microsoft world who were like willing to spend way less than I was char than what Microsoft was charging to teach people WordPress. But like mm -hmm. the first event was like a $20 event and people were like, why would I pay for this when I can get it for free on YouTube? And I'm like, I don't know. Um, so I wanted to increase, I wanted to increase my reach and online courses is the way to do that. And so, uh, now I'm doing, you can buy the courses a la carte or you can sign up for a membership, uh, where annually you'll get access to all of the courses and updates and office hours and, um, you know, the, the community aspect of it. If you buy a course a la carte, you'll get lifetime updates for that course only. And I've done a lot of thinking about it this year. I read Building a Story Brand by Don Miller, a super helpful book, and it really helped me hone exactly what I want to teach. And because I was just kind of like making courses for stuff I knew how to do. And mm -hmm. if you're doing a membership, like that's not really the best way to do it. And so um, I have a couple of flagship courses. One is gonna, going to be my podcasting course. One is my Beaver Builder course and one is my Gutenberg course. And in 2020, to add value for the membership, I'm going to do a course on Astra. I'm going to do a course on a forms builder. I haven't decided which one yet. Um, mm -hmm. But the idea is that you sign up for the membership, you get these discrete courses where you can take them individually, or you can go through a whole curriculum. And by the end, you can have a really good understanding of building a website without code. Um, and then the membership aspect of that is that once you start doing stuff on your own, you'll have access to me and I can guide you through those specific problems. That's really cool. Yeah. I love it. That, and I love the, um, the model that you've built. I think it's great when you can do something a la carte because maybe people just really do need that one class or that's what they can afford to begin with. Um, but the subscription model is really, um, really fascinating too. So are you using an LMS on a WordPress site to do those? Yes, I'm using LearnDash. I'm, uh, I love LearnDash. I've been on them uh, basically since I started making online courses. I was going to do Sensei for WooCommerce. This was kind of before the ball got picked up for Sensei again. And uh, I was talking to Justin Ferriman, the founder of LearnDash, and he asked if I had tried it. He gave me a, a free trial version. And like immediately, the things that I was coding, like custom, were built into LearnDash already. Uh, yeah. So I ditched Sensei. I've been using LearnDash ever since. And actually, if you are a LearnDash user and you're thinking, hey, this guy sounds familiar, um, I do the boot camp videos in LearnDash 3.0. Um, so huge fan. I'm doing LearnDash with WooCommerce mm -hmm. uh, for the e-commerce stuff. And then I'm using WooCommerce memberships and WooCommerce subscriptions for the membership aspect. So all of those put together um, gives me exactly what I need. Um, and I know like, right, it sounds like I'm using a lot of big things. I am, but I did, uh, you know, because I have the knowledge of not just reading a tutorial, I knew these things would work together. Mm -hmm. I knew how to appropriately test and, and things like that, so. Yeah, and you're using tools that other people can use without having to be developers as well. Yeah, exactly. And I'll, I'll say, like, I don't like to say this is easy um, or like you should just be able to do it, but mm -hmm. setting up the memberships and subscriptions with WooCommerce memberships and WooCommerce subscriptions uh, was easier than I expected it to be. That's great. Um, and so I was able to do it in a short amount of time. I tested, 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 right? That's the really important part of if you're going to be a site builder without coding, you're still going to spend that time testing and making sure right. that uh, each membership level works the way you expect it to. The subscriptions are working the way you expect them to. Um, so you still need to test. Uh, that's why if somebody says like, oh yeah, I could set up a membership site in an hour, you can put all the components together, right? You can build a house in a short amount of time, but the house isn't livable until somebody moves in. So yeah. um, definitely test, test, test. Mm -hmm. And then of course you got to get your SEO, you got to do your marketing, all those things. Cause like you said, it's not if you build it, they will come. Yeah. Yes. And that is, that is 100% the hardest part for me. Like I'm a developer at heart. Right. And I'm like, 
I built a good thing and people should know that it's good. And if it's good, they'll use it. But that's not, not always the case. Like, they're not psychic. They don't know. Right. <laughs> exactly. And so uh, I was at Cabo Press a couple of weeks ago and uh, Sean Hescath of WP101 gave a fantastic, uh, hosted a fantastic session about storytelling. And I work closely with Sean. So this is like definitely a reflection on me that I'm not the sponge that I, sh- that I feel I should be sometimes. <laughs> um, but, you know, he talks about telling stories and how the story, the hero's journey, right, that Don Miller also talks about. Um, the story is not about how great your product is. The story is about the problem that you're solving for mm-hmm. your customers. And so um, I finally made a promo video for our creator courses where I tell the story of hey, you're trying to do something and you're like Googling tutorials on YouTube, but like, how do you know it's good? Or how do you know it'll work? Well, for a nominal fee, you can sign up for creator courses and you'll know it's good. And you'll know it's because I've been doing this for decades at this point. So yeah, there's a a couple that comes to our local meetup and they they've been coming for years they're like diehard they he's actually speaking at word camps now and their nice. business has nothing to do with web their business they he he creates things with wood like um drop spindles and things like that oh, and she's nice. a, and she's a quilter so they yeah. they have these you know physical products that's selling but he's speaking at word camps now about the community um he has a, a talk called crap i need a website now what do i do <laughs> Like, you know, and he's given that one in a couple uh, two or three places and he learned how to build his first web, their first websites from YouTube. The very first YouTube he came upon, he watched it. He bought the theme they told him to buy. He like literally stepped through the entire thing. Let's just say he was lucky because it worked, you know, I mean, they've redesigned their site over the years and they're using different products and things. And actually they're using some of the things I've recommended to them because I'm the one leading the meetup and I can help support them if they're using things I know. Right. But yeah. And their sites have grown and look really great, but you're right. It's like, how do you know that that's a good YouTube to follow? You know, how yeah. do you know any of it? So. And like, if go- you, and like, if you run into problems, like, will that, will that YouTuber support you? Right. That's the other thing. Right. And, and if you're just setting up an informational site, like I've made videos like that for winning WP, where it's like an hour and a half long video and we do everything. Like we buy the hosting, yeah. we pick the domain, we set up the theme and all that. And if you're looking for that exact experience, like you'll have an easier time just like kind of following that tutorial. But if you want to deviate at all, or like you've heard bad things about the host they recommend, what do you do now? Um, you know, then uh, that's where maybe a YouTube tutorial is not the best thing for you, right? Or yeah. if you want to do anything more, more complicated than that, if you want to make pieces fit together. Um, then, then what do you do? So, or, or now with, um, you know, with the block editor, how do I know that the YouTube I'm looking at has actually integrated any of that together? And I get into my site and I'm really confused. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So so sometimes actually most of the times it's worth paying for what you're learning. Education should cost you something because those are the people who are actually investing. Yeah, for sure. And, and a little bit of investment on your part will pay dividends, right? Um, Absolutely. You know, I, uh, my courses aren't nearly this price, but I just paid, I think, 700 bucks for a podcast course from uh, Pat Flynn, Amped Up Podcasting. And it's not how to get started. It's kind of, you've already started now. How do you make it better? And I'm implementing things that I know for sure will give me a return on that investment. So um, it was worth the money to me. Plus, you know, a little bit of market research to see like, oh, how's he do his course? Um, mm-hmm. But um, but the stuff I learned, I know I, I know will pay dividends on in, in yeah. the near future. So, Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Let me move into my, what I call rapid fire questions. They're not really rapid fire. I just like to feel like I'm James Lipton inside the actor studio asking all those <laughs> questions at the end. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> What are two or three must-have plugins, either by name or by type, that you recommend to somebody who's building their own website? Mm, by type, a forms, a forms plugin. Because um, mm-hmm. WordPress doesn't come with that, and that's probably the most fundamental core piece of functionality uh, that doesn't come out of the box with WordPress. Right. Uh, so that's a type. Um, a, a plugin that I always recommend is Beaver Builder. Um, mm-hmm. If you're looking for a page builder, Not for everything, but if you want to build a really nice homepage, maybe a really nice landing page for that service or product you want to offer, um, 
I love Beaver Builder for that. So I, I build out all my landing pages with Beaver Builder and uh, it's been uh, a very enjoyable experience for me. Well, that's awesome. And yeah. uh, do you rec- also recommend a backup plugin or are you leaving it to the host and making sure your host is doing backups? What a fantastic follow-up. All of my hosts uh, do automatic backups, but that doesn't, that doesn't really follow the appropriate three, two, one rule of backups, right? You mm-hmm. should have, I think, three different backups on two different mediums and one offsite. Um, so I am breaking that rule. I am not doing any backup plugins, um, but my hosting companies are very diligent about, you know, I use Liquid Web uh, for all of my really important sites. And I think they do like hourly backups and they're definitely off site because like a restore takes a really long time. Um, yeah. But um, so I'm, I'm not. If you are looking for a, a good backup plugin, uh, Backup Buddy is what I use for my client sites who are on mm-hmm. hosts that don't do automatic backups. So if your host went down, you, even if your host was just like decimated, you know that they've got redundancy built in because it's Liquid Web. Yeah, for sure. Um, and like they make it really clear. like. Because the first time I had to do a restore, it's because I messed something up. And I, I talked to support. I'm like, this is taking a really long time. And they're like, yeah, your backup is like not on the same server. It's somewhere very different. So like we need to kind of take just, down. Yeah. 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 They so, do that on purpose. That's the yeah. right way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. And like they're one of the few hosting companies that are properly HIPAA compliant. Like if you pay for that, mm-hmm. um, yeah. which is very expensive. Um but uh so i mean like they've like i've actually toured their like server rooms um oh, as much cool. as somebody can um so uh, you know i've actually seen their hardware setup and how they do things and i i trust that if like if just their machine like catches fire or something my site's still going to be fine yeah that's awesome um redundancy is so important and you know i'm going to guess that you know 15 years ago jiffy web probably didn't have that built in so. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to guess Jiffy Web was running every website, uh, every website on the same machine. <laughs> like, that's what I'm going to guess. And they weren't partitioned or anything. They were all. Yeah, the right. Because <laughs> it's like before Docker was a thing, right? Like, yeah, they, so they were yeah. just like, oh, here's a, we'll create a bunch of different folders or whatever. That's what I'm yeah, guessing. Exactly. Not, to, not to knock them. I mean, you get what you paid oh. for and they were exactly what I needed, but yeah, uh, and, I, and I it would was not. Earlier yeah. on. It was yeah, earlier exactly. on the web too. Exactly. So, yeah. um, uh, let's just say I wouldn't recommend something like that for a mission critical website today. Gotcha. Gotcha. I appreciate that Inco- input for sure. Yeah. So the next question I ask is about mentorship. Now you did talk a little bit about your mentor already. Have you had any other WordPress specific mentors at all in your journey, even if it wasn't kind of an official relationship and who was it? Yeah, this is a, this is a good question because I, I don't think I can point to a specific WordPress developer who was a mentor of mine. Um, Steve Mikosh, my friend uh, from college, helped me a lot with HTML and CSS. And like he saw I was using front page and made sure that I started using Notepad, um, which, uh, which was a thing that people still didn't do. Like, uh, they'd be like right. what do you use, Dreamweaver? And I'm like, Notepad. And they're like, what? Um, but for other WordPress-related stuff, Sean Hescath uh, has been... Um, a big help, you know, with uh, creating courses and doing good videos and and his are the best in the business. Like, I mean, like in the WordPress education space, there's nobody better. Um, And Chris Lemma, not not an official capacity, but um, because we smoke cigars together a lot and I go to his, uh, you know, I go to Cabo Press, um, Mm -hmm. he's offered me some really incredible advice. So I'm certain that there are more people um, but yeah. they're top of mind because I just saw them last week. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, Chris is a wealth of information. Yeah, I, I know, like about everything. Like it's crazy, right? Like usually people who talk a lot talk because they're trying to mask the fact that they don't know anything. But like with okay. Chris, it's like he just it's if just he's talking he's, about something, he knows it. He knows it very he's well. Dealing information. Yeah. I love when you see him at a word camp, and it's like he's holding court because people are just like waiting for him to drop pearls yeah. of wisdom. It's yeah. phenomenal. I need Absolutely. to get him on the show. We gotta get him on the show here. <laughs> gotta find a way to get, maybe send him yeah. some good cigars or something. Yeah, there you go. That's a <laughs> that's a that's a good way. So and he'll be at WordCamp US, I think, right? Yeah, he, I think he usually is. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I know he will be for sure. He's speaking. Yeah. Uh. So, other than the people you've mentioned, is there somebody in the WordPress community that you admire and why? And I'm sure there's plenty, but think of yeah. one or two. 
is there somebody I admire and why? Uh, this, I mean, this answer is, I think it's going to come a little bit out of left field because uh, I don't talk to her very often. Um, but Sarah Dunn, uh, I just think she's like super cool. And I really admire what she's doing with like niching down and how she's been so open about the process. Um, and also, uh, like whenever we get together, she asks me about my fountain pen obsession. And so anybody who asks me about like one of my weird niche obsessions always like has a special place in my heart. Um, so I just, I don't know. I, she was the first one that came to mind. Um, and I, I think it's, I just think she's doing some really cool stuff and I love how open she is about her process. That's awesome. Well, shout out to Sarah then. Yeah. That's great. I love it. Uh, what's something that you still want to learn in WordPress, but you haven't tackled yet? Uh, everything, like so many things. Um, I'm working on, on a new course for, uh, I think I could say this. Well, yeah, I'm working on a new course for Linda.com or LinkedIn Learning. Um, and uh, there's a section about technologies that you should know. Uh, and I talk about like React and automated testing and build tools. And those are things that I only really superficially know. I know enough to tell people about them and tell them what they are, but I haven't dug deep into any of them yet. So if I had to prioritize those, I'm going to say React first um, because I haven't learned React yet. And it's becoming... And for those, uh, yeah, for those yeah. listening, React just really has a lot to do with building blocks for the Gutenberg yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And as more and more of the WordPress uh, dashboard becomes reliant on React, it'll be even more important. So I know JavaScript, I know enough to be dangerous, but I don't know any React yet. And it's because like the first time I tried to set it up, it was like, install all these things and now you're ready to start installing React. And I'm like, I don't like that at all. I think there are better tools now to help you. So I want a one button install for React, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I don't, I don't want to sound like an old guy here, but when I started making websites, like I just had to open up Notepad and write CSS and HTML and it worked. Now you need like a build tool to composer things and <laughs> compile SAS and whatever. So like, I, you know, I don't know. It's I had to reasons. use, yeah. I had to use Notepad uphill both ways in the snow. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> When something broke, I didn't know about it until I viewed it in my browser. Like, <laughs> so, um, I mean, and they're good, re like linters are amazing, but yeah. um, you can get a little bit of, of tool fatigue, especially cause yeah. like I learned Angular and then like, as soon as I learned Angular, people like check out React and I'm like, but I just, I just learned Angular. <laughs> so I, well, I like I to wait long enough to, to make sure the thing I'm learning is, is good. And well, I'm not used. a, I'm not a developer by any stretch of the imagination. I know CSS and I know HTML and that's about it. And that, like you say, enough to be dangerous, right? But um, I learn all these tools because I, I work for a plugin company now and I'm talking to developers on a regular basis. And we have a weekly meeting where we all kind of report out what we're doing. And I write things down that I want to look up later because I don't want to sound like an idiot. But I recently heard the word linting and I was like, um, is that taking the stuff out of your dryer? Cause yeah. like, I don't know what, <laughs> what that even means. So for people who aren't developers, can you explain just in a nutshell what linting is? For sure. I don't know what it stands for. Um, but linting is, uh, basically a tool that checks to make sure your HTML or PHP or JavaScript is formatted appropriately. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so it, it's a little bit of a syntax checker. Uh, and make sure that you don't have anything like missing semicolons that could break your code or it can get even more uh, granular. And so when I was at Crowd Favorite, uh, one of our coding standards was to alphabetize our CSS uh, selectors, right? Um, so you'd have to do like border before uh, uh, font family, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I just like forgot the alphabet for a second. Um, and uh, <laughs> so you could set up a linter to check that and then say, hey, uh, your, your CSS selectors aren't um, alphabetized. So right. uh, there's, it's, it's a, an automated way to uphold coding standards and do syntax checking, which for developers saves us a lot of time because right. now a, a person doesn't have to look at that and go, hey, you're like, uh, does O come before A in the alphabet? Yeah, you need to redo your CSS selectors. 
So right, and and for things like uh, Mustang Semicolon, it's not like looking for that needle in the haystack either. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like you're not looking at your code going, what? Why isn't this working? Where is it? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you don't have to re re go back and try to reformat things because you don't know where that where it is and all that. Yeah. Kind of stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so I love my little list where I go and I look things up afterwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somewhere on the internet, it'll tell me what that means. Yeah. Um, what's one of the biggest WordPress mistakes you've ever made and what did you learn from it? Now, I know you said about you know, not having backups. Maybe there's another one in there somewhere. Yeah, I made updates to, like I changed core more often than I should have. Um, even like when I knew you shouldn't. And I've also made changes to themes and plugins. Uh, after automatic updates rolled out or maybe not after automatic updates rolled out but after I was able to update through the dashboard mm -hmm. and um, uh, so updating core like the lots of warnings about that now but like uh, with plugins or themes like if you make a customization to it right and I still see developers do that right like oh I just want to change this little piece of CSS or I want to mm -hmm. tweak this theme file um, and they do it directly to the theme when you update, you're going to lose those updates, right? So that's why we have the structure for child themes. Um, or if you want to modify a plugin, right, uh, you can, what I'll recommend people do is, um, and fair warning, if you do this, you, and you're like paying for support, it's probably not going to be supported, right? You're modifying the code okay. now. Um, but like, if you like found a plugin, let's say on the WordPress repo, and you want to make a small change to it, make a copy of that folder and rename it and rename the plugin and now it won't automatically get updated right. but and here's my back end buyer beware when updates do roll out it's not going to get updated so if there's a security update then you're going to have a problem um right. but if you like in a pinch if you really need to do something uh, i've done that before so there are ways just to do it yeah. Be, yeah be aware of those two uh cautions right uh, yeah. so you'll lose support and you won't get updates and so if there's like a security update you're not going to get that Right, or even functional updates, you're not going to Yeah, right, for sure. Like, yeah. why isn't it doing that new thing? Well, because right. you didn't actually update it. So. Yeah, right, yeah. And you're not being told it needs to get updated because you renamed it, so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I love that the, um, the, the theme customizer now, the WordPress has built in that CSS area. So yes. you, don't, you don't have to have a child theme just to change the color of a button or a font. Um, for example, which makes it a lot nicer. Uh, surely you still have to have that if you're gonna have, you know, change your footer files and anything that has to do with PHP, but it is nice that you can do some quick edits without worrying about those getting overwritten. Right there. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. And it's like, that's super great for doing, um, I mean, a lot, you know, I'll, if I need to customize CSS, I'll generally do it there. Um, mm -hmm. it just another, um, another fun fact, right? Something that you might not think of unless you've experienced it is, um, make sure you're being specific enough in your selectors that you are, um, I keep saying the word selector and I'm like really nervous. It's not the right one. Cause I haven't looked up that term in a long time. Um, but you know, the, the part yeah. of the CSS where you're targeting, um, the part before uh, the curly brace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, uh, make sure your selector is, uh, uh, specific enough that you're not overriding other, other parts. And if you use a CSS minifier, like maybe you use WP Rocket or some other optimizing plugin, um, you might lose some of those changes in the fray. Uh, mm -hmm. So the CSS gets minified and then the, the cascade kind of messes things up. So just be aware yeah. of those two things. Exactly. And if you don't know what, if you get to the bottom and you're just completely frustrated, go to your local meetup. Somebody there will be able to help you, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, lo I love meetups. Yeah. What is your proudest WordPress moment? Ooh, my proudest WordPress moment. Before I answer this, I do want to go back because I okay. kept calling properties selectors when I said they needed to be alphabetized. Um, so just, I said, you know, like background and border are uh, selectors, but they're not, they're properties. So I'm sorry for that. That's like a breaking news fix. Um, so anyway, <laughs> my, my proudest WordPress moment um, this is kind of a humble brag, I guess, but I wrote a book uh, called Building WordPress Themes for Scratch from Envato. It was my first ever book, and I was very excited because that was like a life goal of mine uh, that I achieved at like 20-something. Um, and so 
uh, there was a picture of me in that book about the author and somebody came up to me at a word camp and they said, are, are you Joe Casabona? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, I'm reading your book right now. And like, they pulled it out and like, they showed me how they knew I was me. And I thought, man, that's so weird and also amazing. And um, that was really the first time it happened to me. And since then, like people have said the same thing about my other book, Responsive Design with WordPress. Like, like I learned WordPress because of you. And that um, more than doing some cool plugin or whatever, like that has a long lasting effect. That's why I'm a teacher. And yeah. as long as I can keep doing that, like I'll be a very happy person. That is very cool. Now, see, I would have totally trolled the person to go, oh my gosh, that is me. How did I get in there? <laughs> I was so flabbergasted that like I, I just should've... couldn't think. I'm like, this person knows who I am because of something I did. That's so weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, humble brag, I wrote a book uh, last year or two nice. years ago called um, A Good Firm Handshake and Other Essential Business Tips. So it isn't WordPress, but it's uh, business related. And, I will definitely uh, check that out because people need to know A Good Firm Handshake. Like, exactly. There's yeah. nothing worse than a wimpy handshake. Yeah. Uh, I'll, bring you, I'll bring a copy to WordCamp US for you. Yes. You have to sign it for me, please. Of course. Of course. You should Excellent. bring me one of yours as well. Deal. Well, we'll trade. Um, let's see. So if you weren't working in web and web technology, so take internet off, the, off of the table what career might you like to attempt? I, I think about this all the time because I can't do anything with my hands. Like I can't build things um, with my hands. Woodworking, you mentioned like that's so cool because I wish I could do it. Um, and I've, I've narrowed it down to two or three different fields. Um, I was in drama club in grammar school and high school, um, which is probably shocking to no one if you know me. Um, and so like maybe an actor, but like, that's hard to get into. Right. The other thing I was really into was drawing. So uh, I think, um, you know, if, if, if I was forced to choose, I would say animator, I'd be an animator, mm. which that's still cool. is uses computers today, but, uh, it's not like web programming. It's very right. different. So incredibly different. That's really cool. Actually. I thought you were going to yeah. say set design for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, uh, I, yeah. I thought about it, right? Because I play the drums, but like I'm not particularly good at that. That's just a fun hobby of mine. Um, yeah. And but I've always enjoyed the animation process. Walt Disney is uh, somebody that I think is incredibly interesting, and he, um, you know, he and his company uh, revolutionized animation. And it's always been interesting yeah. to to read about for me. So uh, yeah. I think well, I'd be really an animator. Cool. Yeah. And you're the first person to give that answer. I love it. Yes. That's so cool. What are, what are common answers? And um, like, not that I'm interviewing the interviewer, but what are, what are the common answers? I actually, get? I love when people ask me questions back. Yeah. Um, so a lot of answers are either teacher or musicians. Um, some people will say they'd be a musician. Um, yes. Teacher, some people, a lot of people stick into technology, but in other areas, things nice. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So every once in a while, somebody will come up with something really different. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, that's, I, I thought, like, if I grew up in the 50s, right, like, the technology of the time in the 50s, like, the common technology was, like, mechanic, like, you were, like, building, people were modifying cars, and, like, maybe I would do that, but if I, if I am, even in that time frame, as bad with my hands as I am now, like, I would never make it as a mechanic. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Although I'm sure the parts were bigger back then too. Cause the yeah, were... yeah, for sure. Like, and like, I'm sure they weren't nearly as complicated as they are today, right. but like still like, like I'm like, I built a bookshelf for my daughter yesterday and I'm just like, this isn't, this is all predetermined <laughs> stuff. And I'm like measuring the drill hole and what do I do? But it worked, it sure. worked out. Yeah. <laughs> but and Just make sure it's anchored to the wall. Usually exactly. Wall. Exactly. Yeah, that's the most so. important part. Yes. And so awesome. like, you know, it just, it takes me longer than I'd like it to. And that frustrates me. <laughs> I understand. I understand. And I love when you have to put like, you're trying to hold all four sides up together to put the screws and, and things in. And you're like, yeah. how do you do this with two hands? I need yeah. like five people to hold this together for me. Yep. And like that, my wife was helping me. Right. Um, but even at times, like she was like trying to help me, but she was like pulling it in the wrong. And I'm not good at giving instruction, right? That's not her <laughs> fault. I'm not good at, at, in these situations telling you what I need because I barely know what I need to do. Okay. So I, at one point I just looked at her, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> she was like, I'm going to walk away now. And I'm like, okay, sorry. <laughs> so, so for the record, when you say you're not good at giving instruction, you don't mean teaching WordPress. You mean specifically building shelves. <laughs> exactly. If I know what I'm doing, I can teach it. But like when I'm building something and I'm like looking at the instructions and they're just like pictures because people like words are apparently too expensive now. 
Um, and I'm, I just, I don't know what I need to do. So I can't possibly tell somebody else what to do for me. So my mother always said the quickest way to a divorce is to hang wallpaper together. So I can, <laughs> <understand>. that's fantastic, <laughs> which is why paint is so important nowadays. Yes. Of wallpaper. Yeah, absolutely. What, <laughs> what's something on your bucket list? Oh man. Something on my bucket list, like not related to WordPress or anything like that. It doesn't matter. Just your bucket list in general. Oh man. I, uh, I missed this question. I didn't think about it. Something on my bucket list. I like to travel a lot. Um, and so I would love to, you know, I, I've been to Italy. I've been all over the United States, but um, I've never been to the Grand Canyon. So I'd love to go to the Grand Canyon. That's like a fairly achievable though, if you travel yeah. a lot. Um, but I, I, I think I'm going to go with that because just like it's something I haven't done that I'd love to do. Oh, and see Metallica in concert. Uh, that's okay. like, they were like my, like one of my first favorite bands and I've never seen them. Um, and so that's also on my bucket list. And uh, unfortunately, I think one's going to be around a lot longer than the other. So I better get on <laughs> I was, that. I was just going to say that if you're going to going to prioritize those, you might want to yeah. go with one of them. Well, that has an expiration date. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> but you yeah. know, you could combine WordCamp Las Vegas and turn That's it into a business trip and see the Grand Canyon. Yeah, there you go. Right, or like I, I like like going to Pressnomics too. Like you're I, close enough, like closer yeah. than I am now. Um, sure. I would like to take my family, yeah. and I feel weird bringing my family to WordCamps and like other conferences because I feel the pull to be with them, but also to make the most of of my money and my time yeah, so I can yeah. completely understand that for sure yeah. show us or tell us about a hidden talent that you have that the WordPress community might not know about oh a hidden talent let's see well I've I've mentioned that uh I'm in drama club or I did drama club so I'm I, an actor um and I've mentioned um that I play the drums Something that I haven't told a lot of people is uh, that, are you familiar with the musical Hamilton? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, at, when I was well-practiced and listening to the, the, um, the soundtrack a lot, I could do uh, the Lafayette rap, right? Oh, uh, cool. And so, yeah, so like I, I did that, uh, <laughs> I would do it all the time and I did it really quickly. And um, when he got really fast, I would also get really fast. So um, with, with a moderate amount of practice, I can I can do like pretty fast raps. Rap God by Eminem still eludes me. That's very difficult. Um, can, but can you yeah. can you can you do that part of the bare naked ladies with the Chinese chicken? Can you do that whole thing? Oh yeah, I'll have to listen to it, but I can definitely do it. Find me at, I will listen to it before WordCamp US, and and we can do like a follow up video. <laughs> it, it's a date. We'll we'll have coffee together there too. Then <laughs> sounds good. So yeah. tell us how we can find you online. People can follow you on Twitter, your website, all of that. Give us the deets. Yeah. Uh, so I am uh, Jay Casabona on most social networks, uh, Twitter and Instagram. I've been doing a lot more Instagram stories lately. So I've been digging on that. And I think the best place to kind of see what I'm up to is my podcast. If you go to howibuilt.it, you'll see the latest episodes. You'll see some of the other resources that I'm promoting over there. Uh, and you can get in touch. So check it out there. Awesome. And I love podcasters, supporting podcasters, being on each other's shows. It's a whole lot of fun to yeah. just uh, to share that. So thank you so much for being with me, to being here with me today. And uh, this is going to air. I've got lots of episodes in, um, in the hopper, I guess. I don't know how do we yeah. say that. It, yep. I've got yeah, that's generally what I'll say in the hopper. In the yeah. Hopper. yeah. Yeah. And so uh, this will definitely air after WordCamp US. So it was well, really it, nice to see you there. <laughs> nice to see you at WordCamp US. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but realistically it is less than two weeks away it's about a week and a half away and holy cow yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> so, man so anyway. i did i like that didn't dawn on me i'm glad i did my i'm glad that we were supposed to do our slides early because i have those done and i practiced already so that's good that's good <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and and what what was your topic on then <laughs> uh well i gave a talk on how to give a rock solid talk uh to contribute to wordpress so uh it went really well and, As I, uh, I know, I yeah. heard so many good things about it. Yeah, so, and I think lots of people are going to contribute to WordPress in 2020 by giving talks. And uh, if you happen to miss it, go to wordpress.tv, look up Jay Casabona, and you will find it there. Yes. Yeah, those get, on, those get online pretty quickly, right? They do. They really do, yeah. There's, they prioritize, I believe, so. Yes, very nice. So thank you again for being here, for having coffee with me this morning, and I do look forward to seeing you very soon. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no 
no problem. Goodbye, we're Coffee Talk Land, and we'll see you later. <laughs> WP Coffee Talk with Michelle Frechette is a proud supporter of WP and Up, whose mission is to support and promote positive mental health within the WordPress community. Visit their website at wpandup.org.